These days, sound in film is taken for granted, but prior to the 1920s, it was very unusual to find a film with synchronised sound. Instead, films relied on live orchestras that would provide a soundtrack and sometimes even sound effects for the film. This period of time was known as the Silent Era, and it lasted from around the mid-1890s to 1927. But the era came to a rapid close after the release of The Jazz Singer in 1927. This film wasn't the first film to feature synchronised sound by any means, but it was so popular and influential that it pushed the entire film industry to make almost exclusively sound films. One of the most fascinating parts about these early sound films is how sound was achieved in them, and in today's video that's what I want to talk about. So the first thing to know about early sound films is that they used a technology called the Vitaphone to achieve sound. Believe it or not, the Vitaphone actually didn't stick around for very long and was quite quickly replaced with sound on film technology, which works by recording sound directly onto the film stock itself. As revolutionary as this technology was though, it's not nearly as interesting to talk about as the Vitaphone in my opinion, which is why in today's video we're going to be talking about the Vitaphone. Essentially, the Vitaphone system was a combination of a film projector and a record player. At the time of recording the film, a film camera would be synchronised with a machine to press a record. The end result of this would be that the film and record would be recorded at the same time and would create a synchronised sound and image. Despite how primitive this system may seem now, when used correctly this could actually deliver some very impressive results. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, you ain't heard nothing yet. Wait a minute, I tell you, you ain't heard nothing. Despite the impressive results, however, the Vitaphone quickly fell out of favour as it was replaced by sound on film systems. Despite this, however, it is the only sound on disc system to have ever been commercially successful and widely used. It was used for around a thousand Warner Brothers shorts and a few feature films. Unfortunately though, the Vitaphone had too many issues for it to stay in usage after the innovation of sound on film. The main problem stems from the fact that the Vitaphone was expensive and difficult to work with for both the film studio and the cinemas showing Vitaphone films. The first problem really was that Vitaphone films were difficult to distribute as you'd not only have to distribute the film print, but also a record that was prone to getting damaged or breaking. In fact, Vitaphone films only tended to last for 20 plays before suffering from audible wear and tear. It was also quite difficult for cinemas to play Vitaphone films, as the projectionist playing the film had to be skilled at syncing the film and record, otherwise the audio and film would not match up, creating a less than ideal viewing experience. Vitaphone films were also difficult to work with for the studios producing them as well. The main difficulty is that they were difficult to edit. This greatly reduced the amount of creative freedom filmmakers enjoyed, and made Vitaphone films more expensive to produce. All of these downsides meant that the Vitaphone didn't stand a chance against sound on film during the format war that was occurring at the time. Not only was the Vitaphone hard to work with, but it was also expensive to get the equipment to play back Vitaphone films. And considering the fact that sound on film was becoming increasingly popular, cinemas just didn't see the point in investing in Vitaphone technology, which eventually led to the death of the Vitaphone. Despite the fact that it's not the most practical technology in the world, and it didn't last very long, I still think that looking back, the Vitaphone was actually a really cool piece of technology that made great use of two existing technologies to create something truly spectacular. And I think for that reason, the Vitaphone has a fascinating place in film history. Thank you. 